Hey everyone, Matt here from Docs Running, and today we're going to do a 100 mile review of the ASIC Super Blast 2. Now, I did a 200 mile ver uh, review of the first version. I was very excited to get this to 100 miles because I really wanted to see what was going to happen. How was the durability going to be? How was the ride? How was the upper? And I will tell you all those things with a little bit of influence as well as how it compared to the progression of the first version. So, as always, let's talk about the specs first. So, men's size 9, women's size 10.5 is coming in at 8.7 ounces or a teeny bit heavier than the previous version the stack height is coming in at 45 millimeters in the heel 37 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop so still within the taller range of the super trainers although that super trainer category is getting a little more crowded now which is a totally different conversation so this has been one of my favorite shoes as a do-it-all shoe and that what i mean by that yes it's a super trainer it's got a ton of quote-unquote super foam so top layer of flight foam uh, turbo plus and then a bottom of flight flow blast plus eco i can't lift the Yes, it's two different foams, mostly the, the more super foamish on the top. Uh, what that's resulted in, especially immediately when I was first trying the shoe on, is like, it was just a little bit firmer than the previous version. So a little more firmer, a little more resilient. So it was a little more balanced, but it was just a touch firmer. And that has continued on throughout the life of this shoe. I will say, compared to the, how it was when we first started, it's been really similar. Where the first version took some time to break in. Like, when I first tried it on, my knee was bugging me, and I was like, what is this? That went away. This one... It's been totally consistent throughout the whole ride. So if you're landing farther up, it's got a little bit stiffer ride, but there is a really good forefoot rocker up here that rolls you really nicely forward, but still has stiffness to make it snappy and workouts really, really great or up-tempo paces. The heel really reminds me of the new Nova Blast where it's not clunky, but when you hit this, it's just a, it's it, the bevel is a little aggressive because it kind of pushes you forward a little bit. So if you're really not used to that, that can be feel a little clunky when you first push, put the shoe on, but then as you get used to it, it really pushes you forward very very nicely and the foam is really bouncy but still a little bit firmer which in my mind actually makes this shoe a little bit more stable than the previous version this has been my go-to shoe yes i've used it for daily runs but it's really excelled on long runs and workouts so i've done a lot of up-tempo runs my wife and i as we're pushing a stroller are trying to get back into shape and doing a lot of up-tempo or longer threshold runs and this has been a go-to shoe for that stuff and it's really held up well even while pushing a almost 50 pound stroller between the stroller and Isabella. It's done really, really well. It does really well because it's so consistent. And that's really the theme of this sole is it stayed and kept its feel throughout the entire 100 miles. If I need something that I know, hey, I need a little bit of snappiness here, but it's not so aggressive that it's like a super shoe, a super racing shoe. This has been a go-to just in case things slow down or I didn't want to do some training miles in it. So it can handle training miles. It can handle workouts, which it's done a lot more workouts in this version. And it can do long runs really well because it just holds up really well for me. And because these sidewalls and it's fairly stiff and the, the sole is actually on the wider end, really embodies that stable neutral ride really well. So if you need some guidance, this is a really good shoe without being a stability shoe that will keep you a little bit more centered. Um, I will say, like as I mentioned, a little more bouncy but slightly firmer. I've done a ton more workouts in this shoe compared to the original. The original just kept getting a little softer, softer, and felt really good with easy runs and you know longer runs. This one has felt more kept that aggressiveness where I've done more workouts in this shoe and I've used it for everything from 400 meter stuff when I was again not wanting to go plated but still wanting stiffer and like a little faster I've done a lot of intervals tempo runs long up tempo runs it can really handle this really well this is the shoe that I think a lot of people you know if you're a mid-pack runner or maybe the, like not the fastest runner if you're someone going I don't know if I should use this super racing shoe for the marathon this is a great marathon shoe this is the marathon shoe for the majority of people out there you don't need a meta speed sky or edge this is a shoe that you should consider because this is one that's going to get you to the finish line because it's a going to be a little more comfortable it's a little less aggressive but it's still fast light and does really really well so i'd encourage a lot of people looking more the super trainers that they're finding the super racing shoes a little bit too much and this one definitely embodies something they can handle fast stuff easy stuff long stuff and does a little bit of everything really really well the other great thing is it is still fairly durable so this is my left shoe you might notice a little bit more wear here so i have 100 miles sole doesn't feel different i've got a little bit more wear compared to the previous version i really think that's because they split up the outsole pieces and and for those of the fall know what i do to shoes when it's not a full length um, and continuous piece of outsole, I'm gonna catch it and rip it. I've got a lot of horizontal forces that happen with how I run. And so I'm gonna catch this thing. So 100 miles, this is not bad. I don't feel this. I'm still gonna get a ton of miles and keep running in this stuff, but it's not quite as durable as the previous version. Still gonna get you lots of miles, but just not as much. And I kind of feel like it, because it got a little bit faster, it's just a little bit less, more, a little less durable, but it still can handle quite a bit. In terms of the upper, that's been totally fine. Durability is absolutely 
absolutely awesome. I will say the first one actually broke in faster. So I really felt that the uh, forefoot was really tapered in the first version. This, and it broke in really quickly. This took about 50 miles to break in. So if you are sensitive to narrow or tapered toe boxes, either you got to stick it out and hang it with this for a while or you might need a different shoe the rest of the shoe actually has good volume a good uh, um width and uh, a little bit of volume there not too much but i did have to tighten the laces a little bit to get a secure fit in the midfoot a little bit wider than the width, width, midfoot normal in the heel yes still stiff heel counter but there's a lot of padding back here so those with heel sensitivities you actually might do okay in it i've done well but just as the as this breaks down be a little cautious but the toe box is really going to be the polarizing thing because it took forever to break in luckily there's a little extra volume up on top here so it gives you a little bit more room but it is tapered so i've had this has been a shoe that like if i don't run in it for a while and the upper kind of like reforms it just feels a little bit narrow through here which does give it more of that racing type feel so that's why again i feel like this is the faster even though it's slightly heavier which i didn't notice um this is the more racier version compared to version one so it got faster a little bit more snug in the toe box still good room through here a little bit more fast a little bit more aggressive midsole and uh sole design but it's still a really good shoe that a lot of people are going to do well in for training and a lot of people are going to also do well in it for racing so i will certainly continue to keep using this shoe i think this is a a more premium version of the nova blast people that find that this shoe to be too much or certainly too expensive although for how long it lasts 200 bucks is not bad I think the Nova Blast is another alternative for, for this, but those who are diehard Super Blast fans know this is still a Super Blast. It still certainly has that versatility. It's certainly got that Super S midsole, that tall stack height. It just a, feels a little bit more aggressive than the previous version. As always, I hope this helps, but I really, really want to know, do you agree or disagree with me with what I just said? I want to know because everybody experiences things different. Please tell me in the comments below if you agree but most importantly, if you disagree and let me know why. Like I said before, hope these always help you make decisions about whether you should invest in a shoe or not. If you're not interested in this shoe and you, this helps you move on, awesome. If you are interested, there's a lot of places that these now are available for, uh, which is much better availability than the previous version. So check that out. Again, hope it helps. I know I'm saying that for a third time.